Hey my friends, what's going on? David Potts here with Song Notes and I'm going to show you a lesson today for the song Gloria by the Lumineers. This one came in request from Patreon supporter David. Thank you very much for sending this in. I was a big fan of the Lumineers first album especially and I didn't know they had new stuff coming out. Uh, this third album of theirs is really solid. Uh, Great stuff. This song is good in particular. I'm happy to show it to you. Now this sort of on the surface might sound like a sort of generic Lumineer song with the hoeing and the haying and the, the hollering and the, all that kind of stompy stuff. But I'll say that the rhythm parts of this song, especially playing it on a guitar, it's pretty complicated like to play. There's um, muted strumming, there's pushed chord changes, there's just some uh, fun shifting between heavier strumming and lighter strumming and going back up to heavier strumming. And it all adds to something that's quite a bit um, rewarding to play if you can put together uh, the sort of time and, and, and tolerance to, 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 to muster it all, right? So I hope this lesson is helpful. I've really had a lot of fun blasting this song over the last couple days and, and week or two, and it's been a fun one to learn. So as you can see here, there's the agenda of everything I'm gonna teach you. And as always, you can find the PDF that will uh, accompany this video on my website, playsongnotes.com. It's a great way to follow along with this video and also after the fact, right? Put this in your notebook of songs and whether you got the lyrics and the chords and the strumming pattern on the first sheet or you want all the nuance of the progression and some of the tabs on the second, third, and fourth page. Uh, I spent a lot of time on this one. I hope it's helpful for you. So let's dive on into this one and learn Gloria by the Lumineers. Okay, so to kick off this lesson, I just want to do a quick playthrough of each section. That's going to include the intro, it's going to include the first verse, uh, I'm going to get to the interlude and the refrain, and I'm going to do one of the later verses which uses a slightly evolved chord progression. And that's important to bring up because it's, it's different than the first one. So let me start with this, and after that I'll dive into everything and teach you how to play it. So here we go. So first up, uh, I want to note that the Lumineers play this song with everything tuned down one half step. So if you want to play along with their version, which is great for practice, especially uh, strumming practice, note that you're going to have to tune all your strings down one half step. So you don't have to do that though. I'm going to keep this in standard tuning for this video to keep things simple for you. So I wanted to call that out. Now next, let's dive into the chords you'll need for this song. The good news is there's only these four chords. Um, and given how much you're going to have to worry about with strumming, if you want to add a, little, a lot of the spice and, and nuance, uh, it's nice to have a very few amount of chords, right? So these are chords are going to be a C chord. I'm going to play an F chord by playing the middle four strings. 
Okay, I'm gonna mute the sixth string and mute the high E string, right? And what that means is that when I basically play all six strings, just the middle four are going to ring out. Then there's a G chord. You can play this however you want, whether you do this or this. Uh, it's totally up to you. Any G you like, and then an A minor chord. Now, a couple gotchas with these. Uh, for the C, you'll notice if you've watched the Illumineers play this live, or you watch other people do covers or lessons of this song, a lot of folks are playing it like this. And what this is, is it's a C with a G bass. This is the note G, and it's gonna be our bass note on the C if we play it like this, right? So this is third fret, third fret, second fret, open, first, open. Okay, you don't have to do this. I think the reason they're doing this in the intro especially is it adds a bit of fullness to the sound, right? It makes it a bit more bass heavy. And when you go from this F, it's nice that basically all you're doing is moving your strings from the third, fourth, and fifth string to the fourth, fifth, and sixth string, right? Because the shape is kind of staying the same. So that's uh, one thing I'm gonna call out. I'm not really gonna use that C shape in my lesson at all, but I wanted to, to call that out in case uh, you've noticed that. And otherwise, let us uh, move on to the next thing So we're gonna talk about. So a quick just intro to the strumming here. And what I wanna talk about, um, I'm gonna dive into some of the detailed nuanced stuff later, but I'll say that I recommend learning a few different strumming patterns for this. Start simple. Start by just doing uh, down strums only on the one, two, three, four counts, right? But on the one count and on the three count, we just want to brush the bassiest string or two of whatever chord. So if we're playing a C, right, just play the fifth and fourth string. And then on the two count, do the full strum. And on the three count, do the you know, one or two th uh, thickest strings, and then for the four, bring it in. What that sounds like is this. Right? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Um, that little accent you're gonna do on the second and the fourth count really gives it a nice backbeat, right? And to make this accented strum stand out a little more, that's why we're gonna tone down the one and the three count. So just sort of do a little flick on the thickest strings, and then, so one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I'm gonna use this strum to teach you the progressions we're gonna need for the entire song, right? But um, I, I, this is definitely a very simple, um, I'm gonna show you more advanced strums as well. Specifically, I'm gonna show you the sort of moderate strum, right? Down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up. I'm also gonna show you this full strum. Down, up, 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 down, up. And I'm gonna show you this interlude strum, which I use only in the interlude. Down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. So before, between those four strings, I'll be in good shape. I'll dive into those in a little bit later. But first, let's move into the progressions now that the entire song is going to use. And I'm talking about chord progressions, right? We have the intro, we have the verse, we have the refrain, we have the uh, the, the interlude part. It's four different progressions you need to know. And I think it's, um, this is one of those songs where mapping them out is really helpful. So check out the PDF. I have them all mapped out here, right? So for the intro, basically all we're gonna be doing is going between F and C. Right, we're gonna basically do um, one and a half eighth notes worth of F. So that's basically one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's really like one count of F if you get it real simple, right? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I'm gonna show you a more complicated way to play this intro in just a moment, so stick around, but let's keep things simple as far as the progressions go. Now the verse is going to be a lot more of C to F to C, but we're also gonna to go to A minor and to G. But the good news is there's not a lot of fast switches going on here. So basically we're gonna be on C for four counts, or for actually for eight counts, right? C, two, three, four, C, two, three, four, F, two, three, four, C, two, three, four, and you repeat that, right? So two measures of C, one measure of F, one measure of C. Then we go to two measures of A minor. Three, four, one, two, three, four. Then G for two measures. And then you, then you go back to C 
into F and G. The sort of intro, the C to F to C, that's going to be the sort of thing we end. We after each verse, we go to that to sort of have a little palate cleanser, right? So that's going to be the verse. Now later in the song, there's a more complicated way to play the verse. It's actually like evolving it, right? It's taking the the core thing I just showed you, and it's adding a little switch from C to G to C in the first four counts, and then in the third measure, right? We're going to go from F to G to C, right? So this is Gloria. You climbed up on your cross, Gloria. You made us sit and watch. So if I played it through, it would be like this, right? So C, C, two, three, C, two, G, two, C, two, three, four, F to G to C, two, three, four. Again, repeat that whole thing. Uh, and F to G to C, right? Then A minor for four. Uh, eight, eight counts, and G for four counts, right? One, two, three, four, right? So that's the verse, the more evolved version of the verse. Now, the interlude section, I'm gonna show you a more complicated way to play this, but this is, you know, this is the piano part. It kind of quiets the volume down a little bit. This is gonna be C for one measure, to F to one measure, to C for one more measure, to G for one measure, right? A minor for four counts, one measure, F for one measure, and then C for two counts, G for two counts, C for two counts. So if I play the interlude, it would be like this, right? One, so C, C, two, three, four, F, two, three, four, C, two, three, four, G, two, three, four, A minor, two, three, four, F, two, three, four, C, and G, and C, two, three, four. Okay, again, that's the, did you know me when? Da, 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 da. And I could take the whole world with me I would find myself along da da Alright, so that's the interlude. And then finally there's this refrain. So if we're keeping it simple, it just looks like this, right? So it's F for two counts, to C for two counts, G for two counts, and A minor for two counts. But then we're going to do two additional measures of A minor, right? So F, C, G, A minor. F, C, G, A minor. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. But the third time we play it, we're gonna, after the A minor, we're gonna go back to the F and stay on that for eight counts, right? So, oh. So for, with this refrain, I recommend just, if you're memorizing this, memorize the F to C to G to A minor, and then just switch between them quickly, and then stay on the last one, right? But then the last time, you add the F at the end. It might sound like a lot, but um, you do it over and over again, and your, your mind will sort of uh, fuse together with the sound, and you're just, you know, you've heard the song in your head, so it, it all kind of it works together, um, I hope, right? Repetition does wonders when you're practicing. So anyway, those are the chord progressions. Again, I wanted to give you this lay of the land because things are going to get kind of crazy with the strumming. Uh, the intro, the verse, the interlude, the refrain, there's strumming nuance to each of these sections. I'm going to talk about all those, right? But again, if nothing else, I just want to say, if you want to keep this really simple, just use this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It's all down strums. It's no up strums. It's on the beat. It's nothing crazy. You can use that for every section of the song, which I just showed you. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the more advanced stuff. Okay, so first up is this intro. So here's the chart I would recommend looking at if you really want to learn the intro as they play it. Um, uh, the rhythm is what I'm really interested in here. So the main thing is for the first eight counts, we're going to do a muted strum. All I'm doing there is keeping this hand lightly touching all of the strings. Don't push them down, but don't also just kind of barely touch three of them, because then the other three are going to ring out. So put your hand on there, cover all the strings, cover them firmly, but not too firm, and then just down, up, 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 down. So this is that full strum, right? It's all up and down strums evenly, but it's the two and the four that are getting the accent. So one and two and three and four and 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 that's the strum you're gonna need. So what you do is you do that for two measures worth, and on the final up down up 
you're gonna ha have your hand in the F position, right? So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Then you go to C. And you see I'm repeating this. On the right side of the screen here, this C, it's C, two, three, four, one, two, three, F, C, two, three, four, one, two, three, F, C, right? And it's the F comes on the N, four, N, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one. That's the intro, okay? That's really where you want to use that full strum if you can, but it is tricky to get this transition from the C to the F with the fast strumming all sounding good. So if you can't do it, just use a simpler strum. Now the verse, you can stick with the full strum. I find it tough to do that though. It, it, it's hard to strum like that for a long period of time in my opinion. So I kind of use the moderate strum here, the down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up. On the one count, I'm going to brush the thickest string or two. Then on the two count, come in full. And on the down, up, down, up, on that final three and four end, the four is going to get the drive, right? So one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and if I was to play the verse like that, it would sound like this, right? Gloria, smell it on your breath. Gloria, oozing peppermint. Gloria, no one said enough is enough. All right, so use that for the verse um, and for the later verses too. If, if you can't do the full strum, just do that moderate strum, okay? Finally, let's look at the interlude here. Now, this is the piano part on the album, right? Um, how do you em emulate that on a guitar? So what I like to do is basically look at this tab here, right? So... What I'm do basically doing is taking the same progression. The only change to the chord shapes is I'm playing a F on the second, third, and fourth strings, and I'm adding my pinky down on the third fret. So three, two, three. This is an F add six, I believe. So um, the good thing about this is you're going to keep your index finger exactly where it is from the C, and just move these two fingers from your C to this F and then do that for the F add six. But the, the important part here is these gold notes. What these are doing is matching the melodic phrase that you hear that the piano is playing. The highest notes the piano is playing that then start to come down and descend. I'm, I'm matching those in this tab, right? <laughs> Hear that piano? That's all it is. So refer to this tab, and then you can strum this however you want. You could you could strum it. You could just kind of do some. I'm just kind of keeping my hand in a loose. This is one of those things where it's hard to teach. Um, I'm kind of keeping my hand in a down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down. But instead of just strumming all the strings, I'm just picking a string or two with each pluck, right? So your mileage may vary. I would encourage you to do what's comfortable, meet your skill level where it's at, but really just, if you can, use these chord shapes and try to accent these golden highlighted notes here, okay? So that's what you're gonna need for the interlude. Now usually I'll play this once and when I start singing, I'll be like, I'll just bring in some light strumming. Know me well, I could take the whole world with me. And the second time you play it, amp it up. Amp up your strumming. Keep your rhythm the same. You can even keep your volume the same, but it kind of is a nice way to add a build up. 
Right then the oh 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 This is really a sort of explosion, a climax of, of just crescendo or whatever. Uh, you, want, you, want, you want dynamics in your songs. You don't want every verse and every refrain and every chorus to be the same volume. You want it to have some peaks and valleys. And this is a really nice song for that. So let's look at this refrain now because there's something I really want to talk about here, which is this idea of pushed chord changes, right? Where the chord changes are happening. Normally, like if you look at the, the, the progression I showed you, I showed you F to C to G to A minor. To C to G to A minor. What I'm doing there, though, is I'm I'm changing the chords on the count, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Right. But what's happening in this song is they're pushing the chords, which means a chord change is actually happening an eighth note early, right? And that's kind of, that might sound crazy, but here's what it sounds like, right? So in, here's with the straight version, the non-pushed version, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, and three. Here's what it sounds like if it's pushed. Two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. So basically, um, I am I'm, cat I'm sort of moving my left hand to the new chord shape right before the four and upstrum or the um, the upstrum right before the one count and the three count, right? So it's a four end count and it's a two end count, right? So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three. Now this is not at all required, but it definitely adds a bit of nuance, especially to this section. But I'll also say, and this is where it gets kind of nuts, is that the Lumineers sound, it sounds like they're doing this for the entire song. Like lit, almost every chord, like it, and even in the intro, it sounds like, you know, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. It's almost like he's doing two strums of F, right? Up, down, up. And then he switches to C for that four and count, right? One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three, four and one and two and three and four and one. And two. Now, the final thing I'll say about this is it's totally not required. It's totally something that's optional. It's tough to do. It's tough to do well. It's tough to do in a way that doesn't muddy it up and make it worse, right? But it is just a very nice technique that you can aspire to um, if you're uh, skilled enough to do so. Or if you're really, 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 really talented, you can just go with it right away. And I think that's what gives the song a lot of the, the character and the distinction that it has. So I wanted to call that out. And what else really is there? Let's see. Dot, dot, dot. Well, there is the ending to the song, right? It starts off by using the same general approach as the intro, right? Uh, down, up, down, up, down. So it's pretty much CFC, right? Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. But the third time we do it, we're just gonna stop after the F. And then kill the strings. And by kill the strings, what I'm doing is basically taking my hand and just letting go, like I'm depressing from the fretboard, but I'm still, I'm still touching the strings, but I'm not pushing down, right? When you push down, it makes a sound. When you depress from the fretboard, it kills the sound, but it doesn't, uh, if I was to take my hand off the string, it would make a really loud noise, right? We don't want that, we just want. Okay, that's how you end the song, is on the third, um, Third group of three strums on the F. You just want to end it there, kill the strings, and the song is over. So that's going to be the lesson for you guys. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this was helpful. Again, you can get the PDF at playsongnotes.com. Uh, it is something I'm very proud of having made uh, for this and all my other lessons. This is my 259th video lesson. So I'm uh, very... Uh, 
very excited to see the uh, the sort of way I'm marking, I'm sort of notating and writing these up evolve to this form because I'm pretty proud of it. I think it's a nice way to to have add some uh, memorable character to this in a way that's that's not ultimate guitar, uh, which can be handy sometimes too. Not to hate, but you know what I mean. Thanks all for watching. I appreciate it, and uh, until the next time, pick up your guitar and play. Bye bye.